Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to do metalworking, woodworking, plumbing, and sewing and make this outdoor sink. I cut a piece of 1 inch square tubing to 24 inches. I used a metal cutting blade on this chop saw that I got and it actually worked really well. I used the one piece I cut to mark three other pieces and cut them down exactly the same. Then I realized that I should have just cut them all at the same time. For the uprights, I put four pieces together, clamped them, marked them, and cut them all at the same time so they're exactly the same length. I also drew a line across all four of these pieces at the same place so that I could use it as a reference to line up my bottom and my top supports. I set these in place, squared them, and then tack welded them together before going back and filling in the welds nice and strong. I flipped them over and did the same on the back side and then got nice welds on all the sides of all the joints. I wanted to cap off the uprights, but I didn't have any flat stock, so I cut a one inch section of the square tubing using a metal cutting bandsaw. I used a magnet to hold one face of this square flush with the top surface so I could tack weld it on. After I had decent tacks, I filled in the weld all the way around on all the sides and then went back with the metal cutting bandsaw and trimmed off the excess metal. Then I just used a grinder to smooth out the surfaces, the edges, and the corners. Obviously, this is not the ideal way to do this, but if you don't have any flat stock, it is a decent hack. And, in the end, it turned out looking pretty good. The frame was getting heavy, so I clamped it down to the table, and that held it in place so that I could put the crossbar in between the top two pieces. I tacked it and then filled in the welds just like I did on all the other ones. After the full welds, I tried to grind these all smooth so that I had nice corners where you couldn't see any kind of a seam. And then I did another one exactly the same way. To connect these two frames, I cut down four pieces of angle iron at the same time so they would be exactly the same length. These are going to kind of act as a tray for some wood paneling to sit in later on. I used the metal cutting bandsaw and it cut right through these even though this is sped up. I laid them out, put them in between the frames, used a square and a magnet to make sure that they were square in two directions before tacking them in place. Yes, I'm wearing shorts, it was extremely hot, don't do it, it's dangerous. I got one piece tacked in on one side, squared up the opposite one and tacked it in as well. I tried to get all these pieces tacked together with the two frames before filling in the welds to make sure that everything was square in all the different directions. I didn't want to finish all the welds until I was sure that the frame would sit squarely on the floor and wasn't lopsided or wobbly. I finished all the welds on the inside and the outside of all the joints and then took it outside to do all the final grinding. There was quite a bit because I'm not really a very good welder, but I tried to get all the joints nice and flat. I used a stripping disc to get off all the mill scale and any surface rust just to get it ready for painting. I gave the whole thing a nice good coat of primer. I saw a really cool picture on Instagram from an account called Bricker and Beam, I'll link it down below, and he had a white frame. I wanted to try that. So I primed it, and then I had to cool off. And that's as far as I've done any planning at all. In fact, the sketch is all I started with. I figured out what I wanted the frame to look like and had some basic dimensions, so now I'm just gonna wing it. The top and bottom frames are the same size. So I wrote down those measurements and then I measured the sink, both the outside dimensions and the overlap on the backside. That's pretty important. I've still got lots of old pallet wood, so I cut down several pieces to match the depth of the cabinet. Based on the width of the pieces, I just figured out how many I needed to cover the bottom shelf. It was easier than working down below to work up top, so I laid all the pieces out, got them in the right order, and then made sure to turn them all the right direction, upside down. I had some other pallet slats that I cut down to length to add on the back side as supports. These are going to hold the whole thing together. I just kind of roughly measured the same distance away from the sides and then started screwing them on with decking screws. I realized very quickly that I should be pre-drilling these so that they didn't split, so I pre-drilled the rest of the holes and then added screws to lock these pieces all together. Since this is going to be outside, any split that you have in this wood is just going to get magnified over time, so pre-drilling is just a good idea. I flipped this panel over, dropped it into the bottom, and it fit perfectly. I did basically the same process for the top, but there was going to be a big gap where the sink would go. I ripped a couple of the pieces on the table saw to make sure that the gap was big enough for the sink to fit down inside. Once I tested it and the overlap was okay, then I had to cut some pieces to go on the front and the back side of it. I also had to rip those down to fit in the gap. But still, the curve area of the sink needed to be removed from these before they could go into place. I roughly marked out the width and the depth of where these cuts needed to be on both of the pieces, and they're not the same from front and back. Then I just used a jigsaw to cut them out, and they didn't have to be pretty because this is going to be underneath the whole table. The sink will overlap these ugly edges so you won't see them at all. 
I went ahead and pre-drilled holes on these and added some screws just to make it easier since I was going to be working upside down. I held these in place with a few clamps and then drove in all the screws just like I had done before. I made sure to squeeze the top panels and these cross pieces together while I was screwing them in place to make sure that the joints were tight. The panels for the sides were done exactly the same way as the panel for the bottom, but it was a combination of wider and thinner boards. Each of these panels got a cross piece on the top and the bottom in no particular place, just enough to connect all the pieces. I made a panel for each side and fit them inside the frame just to make sure that they fit. The last wood to cut was an apron to go in front of the sink. It was just a simple board, but one of the widest ones that I had. Then I spent quite a while sanding these down. I wanted them not to be so dirty, but to look distressed. I never put any kind of a finish on this wood, and I'll probably go back and do that later, because I think it needs it if they want to stand up outside. I made sure to completely dust down the frame before adding the final coats of gloss white. Again, this was inspired by Bricker and Beam on Instagram. I had to replace the drain system on this second-hand sink. I got the cheapest one I could find from the home center and it worked just fine to connect these two so that they would drain into one place. I also got a really cheap faucet with a sprayer, a cap to cap off one of the water inlets, and a hose connector so that I could run a hose directly to it. I added some pipe joint compound to both of these before screwing on the cap and the hose connector, made sure to screw them on all the way. I came back later and added some Teflon tape to these just to be safe. I just installed this based on the instructions that came with it, it's really really easy and only took a minute. Then I dropped in all the wood panels. I needed to figure out how to connect them together, and it dawned on me that it was actually pretty simple as long as I didn't have to worry about connecting them to the steel frame. I used some L brackets to connect the side panels to the bottom, and then the side panels to the top. These are all going to be on the inside so you won't see them, and if I ever need to take this apart, it'll be really easy to do. I set the front apron in place and then traced where it overlapped the piece of wood from the top section. I used this line to line up the brackets so that they would set flush against the top on the inside. With all the brackets attached to the apron, I used some clamps to hold the panel just in place. They weren't tightened down, they just stopped it from falling. This let me screw it in so that the whole thing was secure. I dropped in the sink, and the last thing was to add some plastic feet inside the metal tubing. I got a whole bag of these for very cheap on Amazon, and if you make furniture with metal tubing, you might want to have some as well. Then I just screwed on the hose to the faucet. If you had hot and cold lines that you could tie into, that would be the best in this situation, but I don't have those. So I'm just gonna use the hose as the water feed, no hot water, and for the drain of the sink, I'm just gonna use a bucket. If you weren't gonna be washing anything dangerous up there, you could actually just drain this out into your yard. But in this particular place, I don't have any other place to drain it, so the bucket seems like a pretty good way to go. So the last step is to do something to cover up this bucket, and I think I'm gonna do curtains, but that means I need to learn how to sew. I got two yards of this outdoor fabric at the fabric store. I used a straight edge and a rotary cutter to cut down the piece for my curtain. I'm gonna make two curtains and each one is three quarters of the width of the area that I'm trying to cover so there will be plenty of overlap. I used this measuring tool to set the depth of the seam that I wanted. Every time I folded over the material and pinned it, I checked to make sure that the fold was about the same distance. This will give me a relatively even seam when I go to sew them up. I pinned all the way across one end of this before taking it to the sewing machine. This is the first time I've ever sewn, honestly, and it actually went a lot better than I expected it to. You can see I have a raw edge of the material exposed, and that will probably fray in the long term and mess up this seam. Ideally, you would want to fold this over twice and then sew it so that that frayed edge is covered on the inside of the seam. But at this point, I was really just testing to see if I could even sew, and once it kind of worked, I just kept going up the same way. Overall, I was really happy with my first seam, it's not perfect, but you won't be able to tell from more than a couple of feet away. This was the bottom edge, and I pinned up and sewed the two side hems in the exact same way. While I'm finishing that up, let me quickly tell you about the sponsor, and that is Kalo, and they make these awesome silicone wedding bands. If you're into athletics or you work with your hands, you definitely want to get one of these because they are more comfortable and safer than your metal band. They're safer because it will rip before your finger rips, and that's important. Be sure to go check them out, kalorang.com. By the time I got to the third hem, I was much more comfortable with this whole process. To make the top loop, I just folded it over in the exact same way, but did it at several inches instead of a half an inch. I ended up using less pins the further I got along because I realized that I was using way too many in the beginning. It's also a lot easier to sew when the pin is not so close to the hemline. This material is some sort of a polyester so you can melt it. I used a ridiculously huge flame on a lighter to melt this fringe so that it wouldn't fray anymore. I honestly have no idea why I modified the lighter to be like that, but it was a pretty interesting surprise. 
So this is my first curtain ever. And here's my second one. So the sewing actually went a lot better than I expected it to. Special thanks to my wife for helping me get started with that. To hang these up, I'm just gonna use this really cheap tension rod and just put it up behind this wooden apron right here. I tested out the faucet while I was cleaning up the sink from being in the yard for a long time, and the drain actually worked perfectly. It also works pretty well to close one of these up, put in some drinks and add some ice, and let it be a cooler while you're outside. We've already used this quite a bit, we're really enjoying it, but there are two things that might change. One, the top needs a coat of polyurethane because it does get wet, and I'm not really crazy about the curtains, so I may pick a different fabric and remake them. If you've got comments or questions about this project, leave them down below, I'll do my best to answer them. I've got a lot of other videos for you to check out, and don't forget to subscribe to my main and my second channel. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.